Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for pressing on for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Well, this is the first time for me to visit IBS. Well, I was surprised with the security system and the buildings. They are all up to date. Wow, yeah. And this this looks pretty good to the research, I think. Yeah. Hope that Professor Um can settle down IBS Discrete Mass Group uh, here. Well, okay. Um, well, as I was introduced, my name is Suwil Oh. Uh, I'm from Sunni Korea. Uh, so my research uh, lies in extrema and spectra problems on regular graphs. But recently, I'm working on uh, research problems related to Lobash GF factor theory. So one of them uh, will be given in this talk. <coughs> So where is the clicker? Uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> so in 2010, uh, Lu Zhu and Yang just gave an upper bound on the largest eigenvalue to guarantee the existence of uh, an other 1B factor in uh, connected the regular graph with the even number of purposes. Okay, so in this talk, uh, I'm going to improve their bounds, which is actually sharp. One. But probably some of you may not be familiar with the, some of the terms on this page. So I will briefly. <laughs> okay, many of you. Okay, so I will briefly introduce uh, basic definitions. In this talk, I'm just going to uh, handle a uh, simple, finite, and only uh, undirected graph. Okay. So consider two non-negative uh, integer valued functions, GNF, defined on the vertex set of graph G, such that uh, the values of those two functions uh, at most is the degree of a vertex of V. Okay. And then assume that the FV is always greater than or equal to GV on every vertex. Okay. Now, GF factor of graph G is just a spanning subgraph such that uh, the degree of a vertex V in F is always between G and F. Okay. So, on AV factor of a graph G, it's just a special case of GF factor. Okay, when uh, uh, GV is constantly just A and the FV is constantly just V. Okay. And even on other AV factor is that the degree of V in F is even or odd for every vertex. <coughs> and when A is equal to B, it is called an A factor. And probably you know everyone. So every vertex has the same degree R, then it is called the R regular. And a graph G is T as it connected if the resulting graph obtained from uh, uh, graph G uh, by deleting at most T minus 180 is connected. Okay. And the edge connectivity of graph G written kappa prime of Z is just maximum T such that G is T as it connected. Okay. Well, as some of you probably will know, um, many researchers actually worked on the conditions okay, to guarantee the existence of A factor in a certain family of graphs, especially in maybe our regular graphs. Okay. The earliest one, earliest result related to this was given by the Peters in 1891. So he actually showed that every even regular graph has a two factor, which implies this theorem. Okay. So how to how to prove every even regular? I'm sorry, say to our regular graph. So <clears throat> as you know, um, if everybody takes an even degree, then there is an Euler or Lorentz circuit. Right. So say u sub zero, u sub one up to u sub l. So this is Euler circuit, which means that 
in sub zero and u sub l, they are the same. Okay. So from this circuit, we can create a new graph, which is bipartite, and uh, twice the number of vertices in the original graph G. Okay. So <coughs> you can duplicate the you can duplicate the vertex u sub i like uh, uh, u sub i minus and u sub i plus. Okay, and then we can give an as u sub i minus and u sub i plus one and plus like this way. So for example, you can think about the this is a complete graph with the three vertices. Say this is u sub zero and u sub one and u sub two. Then there is an Euler and circuit u sub zero, u sub one, u sub two, and u sub zero. Okay, and from here we can have a, a graph, u graph, which is bipartite, u sub zero minus and u sub zero plus, and u sub one minus u sub one plus, u sub two minus, and u sub two plus in here, because this is all already in here. So. <coughs> and there is an edge u sub zero and u sub one, so we give an edge this way, and u sub one, u sub two, we give an edge here. And u sub 2 and u sub 0, we give it this one. Okay, so you can see this is two factor and this is one factor in here. And actually, uh, from here, if this is a 2R regular graph, then this is just a R regular graph, right? So, and you know that every R regular graph, every R regular bipartite graph has a one factor by using Hall's theorem. Right, so that means it has a one factor in here. So this one factor actually uh, in two factor in the original graph. So that's why uh, every even regular graph has a, a two factor. And then you can easily show this one because the twelve regular graph has two factor. Then you can delete two factor. Then you have twelve minus two. So again and again, so it implies this one. Okay. So then, how about uh, just the a factor? Or if this degree is odd, then what happens? So actually, many people worked on those kind of things. And uh, one of the nice results is by Galani. So he proved like this situation, depending on the uh, parity of the uh, degree. And also, uh, they also considered the, uh, the edge connectivity in here, so in this way. Okay. And the Bolobas and Saito and Wormert improve their bound that way. So you, there's only, the only one difference in here. This must be the other number in here. Okay. Well, and uh, Nielsen and Renderes also uh, extended their result by considering the number of vertices. Because they did not consider the number of vertices in here, right? So they just found a lower bound okay, for the number of vertices. Of course, related to the, uh, the this A, and uh, also T, and uh, also R, regularly. Okay. But well, in this talk, I'm going to talk about eigenvalue condition. Okay, so <coughs> I wanna also introduce just uh, uh, the stuff things are related to eigenvalue things. Okay, so in this talk, I'm only going to handle just the adjacent matrix, not the other matrices. Okay. So the adjacent matrix of a graph G is just the uh, with, with vertex of v sub 1 through v sub n is just the m by m matrix, such that a sub i j is just the number of edges between v sub i and v sub j. Well, because we do not consider multiple edges, so in this case, so if there is an edge, then just one. No edge, this is zero. Okay. <coughs> and the eigenvalues of graph G are the eigenvalues of just adjacent matrix. Okay. And then, the eigenvalues graph are indexed in non-increasing order. So lambda sub 1 of G is the largest eigenvalue, and lambda sub n of G is the, the smallest eigenvalue. But you may be wondering why we can have an order. Good point, right. So if the matrix is a real and symmetric, okay, then we can guarantee that that's, uh, uh, the all eigenvalues are real. So we can easily show this one. So you can consider just this form, x dot a, a x, okay? And then if a x is equal to just lambda x, 
then x star this is conjugate so ax so ax oh my. So ax is equal to lambda x and here. So you can express this one to the lambda x star and x and here. But well, a is a real and symmetric. So you can also express this one as x star and a star and x. I mean conjugate. So you can express this one as ax and conjugate in here. This is lambda x and here. So this is lambda ba. This is conjugate and x star and x, so we can show that lambda b is equal to lambda bar. So that's why the eigenvalues are real, so we can have an order. Okay, <coughs> okay. and a matching in a graph G is a set of disjoint edges. Okay. And the matching number is the maximum size of matching. Okay. And the always to result uh, to guarantee the existence of one factor in a Regular graph with even number verses was given by uh, Brower and Hammers in 2005. So they gave uh, an upper bound for the third largest eigenvalue. Okay, to get into the one factor in here. So you may be wondering why there are third largest eigenvalue here, and how did they get this number of things? Okay, but well, briefly explain it. They used uh, uh, intellect. They use actually Bernstein formula. To determine the matching number, you know, we have to use the Bears formula. And uh, they start with the Bears formula. So they assume that she has no one factor. Okay. So no perfect matching. Then you know, by using the Bears formula, they exist as satisfying some condition. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, they use, uh, uh, they show that actually there are certain type of other components. There are at least a certain type of three other components there. I will show you actually, not this one. But. And then they just use the fact that the uh, largest eigenvalue is always greater than or equal to average degree. Uh, but the uh, largest eigenvalue is greater than or equal to average degree. This equality holds only when graphs are regular. Okay, so that means, uh, well, when they use this technique, that uh, this boundary is not tight, actually. So, uh, some other people try to find, uh, I mean, try to upper, I try to find, uh, improve this bound, and which is actually sharp. Boy. So, that was done actually by Chaba and Gregory and Hammers. So, they found the best upper bound in this one. They, in, in this case, they use also some interlation theorem and Poisson Tells theorem. Uh, maybe I'm not going to talk about quotient tests. That's it. If time allows, then maybe. Okay. But <coughs> okay. And alpha prime is a matching number. Yeah, alpha prime of g is the matching number. Yes. So this is so they show actually this uh, previous one. They only talk about the one factor. That's why they assume that uh, even number of vertices. Other mm -hmm. number of vertices, we cannot have a uh, actually information, <laughs> right? That doesn't make sense. But uh, in this case, we didn't. We didn't. We don't have any assum uh, assumption. On, we don't have any condition on the number of vertices in here. Okay. So if it is a even, then we can have a perfect match, or maybe near perfect match. Or if it, this is odd, then this is near perfect match. If n is even, that's a, just perfect match. So it implies the previous result. And this is better bound. And this bound actually looks like this. Well, yeah. But I will also talk about this one. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, and well, they just consider connected our regular graph case. Okay. So uh, when I uh, during my PhD studies, uh, Java. Well, during my PhD studies, I normally worked on matching number. Actually, I try to find the smallest matching number in an amber text uh, connected the regular graph case. So I also consider the uh, as a connected list. So things, and then well, that's why uh, when I gave a talk in Sun Siam Conference in probably 2008, I do not remember exactly, but probably. And then just uh, Chang Ba, I mean, Sabi, Sabi Chan just uh, attended my talk, and uh, he just made uh, some kind of small wager to relate to this one to me and also my advisor. But my advisor normally not interested in spectrum. 
at all. He does not work on everything. Although he has a very nice expo also which handles spectral graphic stuff things, but he normally doesn't work on spectral graphic. Okay, so but I was very interesting, so I just studied it. Okay, and then luckily I just extended with the with the shell uh, to TS connected our regular case. Okay. So more and more challenge cases in here. It looks quite Okay, but actually it's not very hard. Yeah. Anyway, <coughs> so this actually implies uh, the 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 result, previous result of Charles Urban hammers. Okay. Uh, some people also worked on well the conditions to have an a vector. Okay. So blue uh, to prove just the uh, the upper bound but very the largest eigenvalue. Okay, and here. So depending on the uh, degree and a, okay, so the bound is slightly different. So like this, like that, okay. And uh, Gu extended the above result actually t is connected to our regular vectors also, okay. And this rule actually same rule. I just checked on that side now. So he, he's kind of working on yeah, it's a kind of Lobashi effect that we will later on, and and also eigenvalue things. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So Lu and Wu and Yang actually uh, found an uh, uh, upper bound for the double largest eigenvalue to guarantee that it is just one big factor here. So, in regular graph, connected regular graph case. So I will I will show you how, how to how to get the, the, this bound. And then uh, I will uh, I will give you the sketch of the probe of my results. Uh, to prove this one, we actually need uh, two two important theories. <coughs> one of them is uh, Amash's one. Uh, I I did not check the proof of this one, but probably to get this one, they probably use the uh, Lobatsu effect theory. This, one. this is a special case of a Lobashi effect that here. Okay. When actually GB is equals to always just constantly one, and FB is equal just to B, and this B is always odd number. <coughs> so uh, G has an odd one vector, and if and only if, well, you might be well familiar with this one. Okay. If you are familiar with uh, the best formula or third formula, right? But uh, that time this B is just one, right? Pretty much the same. Okay. Okay. Oh, so B is constant. Or? B is constant. Yes. So and B is constant and B is odd. Because B is even then we could just call it because we only had the odd, right? Yeah. Okay. And Chaba uh, Gregory improved. Uh, well, you know, we have this one, but they improved this one slightly better, right? So average degree and. A little bit more in here, yeah. <coughs> so in here, so if uh, a minimum degree is less than this one, so if it's not regular graph, okay, then they can use this one. So slightly, so okay. So before proving actually that, uh, before proving uh, this one, okay. So let me give us some simple theorem to prove in here. Why, um, yeah, I will explain it here. Yes. <laughs> not, not in here. Next slide. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so we assume that R is greater than equal to four. Okay. So, and that R is also even regular graph in here. Even the regular graph is important. Okay, and then this condition also important. R is less than or equal to two times b. Okay, so how to prove this one? So we prove the uh, by contradiction. So so first we use a uh, many theorem. Okay, so assume that she has no atom of factor. Okay, that do you remember? Mark uh, this one. No one be factor, then there exists some S. This is bigger than this one, right? So, oh, so by Imash's theorem, so there exists some set S, 
and here this is bigger than this one. Okay, so and those are other components in G minus S. So this is the uh, uh, number uh, number of num this O of G minus S is the number of other components in G minus S. Okay, okay so <coughs> say G sub one through G sub cube is the other component. So Q, this is the cube, right? This is cube. Okay. And R G is our regular graph. Okay, and R G. So we have S in here. And then there are other components in here. Okay. And we count the number of edges between S and the other components in here. Okay. Then maximum number of edges definitely R times S, right? Because we count the number of edges between. Okay. And say this is G sub 1, G sub 2, and G sub Q in here. And this notation is the, this notation is the uh, edges between V, G sub I and S. Okay. And this is the size. Okay. So this is greater than or equal to this one. And this is even regular graph. Even regular graph. So that means we cannot have a cut edge. If there is a cut edge, then you can delete this one. Then this is also graph. But what is the degree sum of this one? Even, but you only lost one thing. So this degree sum is odd, which is a contradiction. Because the degree sum is always even, right? So that's why we have two times Q in here. And we assume that this is bigger than this one. So this is bigger than this one. So actually, uh, this time plus one, but it will just distribute two. Okay. And then we assume that to be is greater. So to be is greater than R. So that is greater than equal to this, which is a contradiction. This is, this is kind of simple one. Okay. Okay. So you got a flavor. This one. Uh, how about this one? We do the same thing. We prove by contradiction. Okay. So assume that G is no other one defector. Okay, <clears throat> and then by our mash, we have this one, same thing. But actually, uh, from here, not just a plus one, and we can put actually plus two. This is greater than equal to plus two, not plus one. Can you count? Because we, uh, we, we, we start with an even number of vertices. Even number of vertices. And even components, we don't care, that's an even number of vertices, right? So this is odd. Because it's add component. Number of vertices is odd in here. Okay, if we have even, this must be even because the total number of vertices is even. Right? So that's why we have the same parity. The size of S and uh, this. So that's why we can have uh, this one plus two. Okay. okay. And uh, Okay, you ask the why there are three. I mean, okay. Assume that there there are at most two other components. Two other components. The 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 the, the number is between and here and here is it less than this one. Okay, at most the two. Then let's see what happens. Oh, that means we, we need to have, well, if this is not true, okay, if this assumption is not true, then we need to have at least three. Oh, then this three. Okay. Okay, so all regular. So we count the number of edges again. Okay. So this is the maximum thing. Okay. And between them. Okay. And, uh, well, I said uh, there are at most two other components. Okay, the number of edges between those two is less than this one, right? So that's why we have this, right? Because two, only two. Yeah. And the other components are always bigger than this one, right? That's why we have this. And the small one is maybe possibly one. Okay. 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 And then we assume that this is greater than or equal to this one. So we will place it here. So two, two cancels. And maybe also this, although there is a ceiling in here, but anyway, we can have a here. So this is also a contradiction. So that means uh, there are at least three other components less than this one. Uh-huh. Okay. So 
So at least three. So say that was the Okay. Now we think about the largest eigenvalue of uh, uh, those graphs. Okay. Let's see. So remember this theorem. Okay. The, the largest eigenvalue is bigger than this one. And uh, this is a uh, other component, right? And this is less than R over B. Okay. And you can show that the number of verbs is at least uh, R plus two. If R is odd, and uh, if R is even, this is greater than or equal to R plus 1, if the number of edges is less than this one. Just think about it. If there is only one vertex, then we have R verbs in here, right? But if the number of verbs is very small, less than R in here, how many is coming out? We have to have at least uh, R edges, right? But R is bigger than this one. So we cannot have that kind of situation. <coughs> Anyway, so now you can think about the average degree in here, right? Average degree, and then you can put the place in here. Maximum degree are R, because this is our regular graph, right? It's our regular graph, and uh, this, if you just think about this one, this is not our regular graph. It's uh, just a subgraph of our regular graph, right? But it's not our regular graph. Which means that we can apply this this this, this bound, okay? And then now we can replace this as R. And actually, uh, if n is bigger, then we have a smaller one. So we think about the smallest possible thing. And I told you that uh, R plus one or R plus two, depending on the parity on R, okay? So that's why we can have this kind of thing. I did not write that because depending on parity, that's why there are uh, four cases here. See, R plus one or R plus. Two. Oh, maybe I, I, I <laughs> R is even. This is R plus one. R is odd, and then I should replace R plus. There are typos. Sorry about that. This is R plus two. Yeah, this is that's why R plus two square. And see, uh, here, R n is equal to R plus two. This is R R plus two. So R plus two R plus two square. Okay, like that. Okay. Yes. Okay, and. <laughs> The inter what have you heard about the interlacing theory? Okay, so uh, given a graph, given a graph, okay, you should think about the induced okay. So H is a indu induced subgraph. Okay, say this is induced. Okay, then lambda sub i of H is less than or equal to lambda sub i. So this, we can also have a lower bound for this, but we don't care. We only need this one. Okay, so this is interlacing theorem. So give it a graph, and you can think about the induced subgraph inside. Okay, now you can compare the eigenvalues. I's, eigenvalues, okay. In this case, okay, so in the whole graph G, you can think about the third largest eigenvalue. Why third? Because we have uh, at least three other components in here, satisfy certain condition in here. Okay. <coughs> so this, I'm sorry, they only write down here. So lambda sub oh. third largest eigenvalue is greater than or equal to third largest eigenvalue of a union of those three. Those union of those three. Okay. And okay, the, the, uh, by applying in, uh, in the interlacing theorem. So we have this one. And then the largest eigenvalue of this one is also an eigenvalue actually of the original graph. The eigenvalue of this one, largest one, also in here. Largest eigenvalue in here, also there. That's why we can have this one here. The minimum of this one. So that's greater than that one. And then we only actually care about the minimum of this one. Okay, but, uh, but the problem here, it's not a problem, but. This is not tight. Again, <laughs> this is not tight. Okay. So anyway, we can use this one, then we can have this. I, I did not write that because it may, depending on the parity, so, so we have many cases in here. That's why we have this. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So is this kind of technique when you to prove my, uh, I mean, to prove my result, we need to do something more. 
but I'm, I'm not going to. This is very technical. And uh, I also should introduce uh, not just interlacing theory, but uh, more uh, technically, what's a question interlacing theory. So, so then, uh, yeah, then probably, you know, oh, okay. But then, anyway, so, okay. Uh, uh, and uh, to use, uh, I mean, when we use the pairs of formula, okay, and we let it to also matching number, and still when we do the uh, actually same technique like this. Okay. You have this certain union of three graphs. Yes. Mm. Is it essential to have this union? This union, because I said it's used. Yeah, I mean, that's why they are separate, right? So when then we, we have induced, then what we have separately considered, right? Right, right. Right, right, right. But if it is not induced, then if we may have uh, edges in between, then we cannot say that way. So we should be careful, that's why. What a question. Okay, so we can borrow this one. And how can I for my result. <laughs> well, although I have also several cases in here, because it depending on the pairing, still the same situation. Okay. But uh, I just want to have a sharp upper bound, okay, by using different things. I mean, we, 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 we kind of followed almost the same things, okay, but uh, see in here, the important thing is what is the minimum of the, uh, the, this type of other component. This type of other component. What is the minimum of the largest eigenvalue of this type of other component? That's a hard thing. Well, <clears throat> as, I, as I know, uh, is there anyone who knows uh, Porov, Professor Dicky Porov at University of Memphis? He, he, yeah, Nikki Porov. Nikki Porov, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure my pronunciation is right or not, but Nikki Porov. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, he, he's normally working on uh, extremer spectral gravity problem. So, probably everyone knows the Turan theorem. Right, so we kind of when we have the uh, the largest eigenvalue, I mean the spectral. What is the maximum of the spectral radius of uh, uh, like a K sub R plus one pre graph? Something like that. So that gives the the Turan number, right? But uh, that one also the upper bound actually also comes from the uh, the actually Turan graph. That's still same thing. So he's working on those kind of things. Well, <clears throat> uh, as I remember, uh, he did not work on saturation. Saturation stop things. Uh, well, recently I worked on saturation number. Uh, so I'm also interested in like a complete graph, saturated graph. Then what is the minimum of the spectral radius? So far, no one knows. I'm working on it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I, I will talk about this research maybe in the future. I, I'm not sure, but probably, yeah. Anyway, so many people, I mean, including uh, Nikki, Professor Nikki Pro, were working on uh, extreme and spectral graphic. And this one is the same situation. So, <clears throat> this is a certain type of graphs, actually, in regular graphs, our regular graphs. And the number of edges just, uh, uh, you know, we just lost this many edges, right? Maybe possibly we lost maybe R minus two edges. Or just we lost just one edge in here. Actually between one and the R minus two edges. Right? Like this. And actually less than R will be maybe, but this can be maybe uh, just R minus two or R minus one, depending on also R and the ceiling of R will be, actually. Okay. So what is my goal? They just got a low run for this one. 
Actually, I want to determine the minimum of the largest eigenvalue in this family of graphs. And uh, I luckily figured it out. Okay. So how to do that? <coughs> so first, uh, I just consider, I just consider the family of uh, uh, graphs. Uh, actually, this this kind of graph. But actually, this is more broader actually than that. This one. Okay. So because this is odd component, so the number of verbs is odd, and this is a, a subgraph in our regular graph. Okay. So maximum degree is and most R. Okay. And uh, uh, the the number of edges, number of edges, because they lost uh, maybe those many, because they lost this less than this many edges, but it can be minus one or it can be minus two depending on R, the parity of R and uh, the ceiling of this one, right? So that's why I put just the epsilon because it depending on. And maximum case, we can just lose just only one. At least we have to lose one. Okay. We have to lose one. Okay. And from here, I by using just the, the average, uh, by using just the, this, uh, I just wrote down here. Yeah. By just using this result, I, I, I need to show that uh, the minimum of the largest eigenvalue in this family. It only happens. This this comes from just the smallest, smallest possible graph in here. And number of edges also exactly this one. So we want to lose this many edges actually. Well, this can be very, very big, like this. Right? It can be very big, why not? I mean, it can be very big, like this. Right? right. But actually, the smallest, large, I mean, the minimum of the largest eigenvalue, okay, only happens if this is the smallest case. Okay? So, depending on R, so that's just exactly R plus 1 or R plus 2. So, I showed this one by using this one. Okay. And when R is even, it's a little bit easy to handle because uh, this is R plus one verb decision here, and we lost maybe say R of B, say maybe two, for example, or one, depending on R and R of B, the the the, the of this one. Okay, then. We only lost uh, R over B minus two edges, right? So how can we have this one? Well, maybe you can have this as just a complete graph in here, okay? And from the other part in here, we just lost maybe those edges. So we did think about just a complete graph in here. Um, complement of this one, and join, and uh, R plus one minus those many purposes. So from here, and then by using uh, I'm not going to do the quotient intercept, but, but by using the quotient intercept, we can just easily show that uh, uh, this one, this case is actually the smallest case. That's easy. But R is odd. We have uh, one more vertex. So R plus two. That means we have more case analysis in here, and that that is kind of a little bit tough to tough to handle. Okay. Uh, yeah. But well, if we use just the question interlacing here, then if you have a nice vertex partition, if we have a nice vertex partition in here. Then, well, and then from here, we can create a quotient matrix, like a 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrix. And then we can compare still the, the largest I can build there. 
the original one and then this one and then I can I can show I can I can show that but that's a little a little bit tough and then the computation is quite ugly yeah so that's why I just want to skip that one yeah and that number actually looks like this the, the even case is easy but uh, the way we should be able to determine the 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 largest eigenvalue of this one by still we can use the quotient theory. Yeah, yeah, so. <coughs> okay. So anyway, finally, why we will we prove the, this kind of things with with this uh, the, the idea. So I can say this is now true. Uh, but um, why we just should consider other one B factor? We probably can handle just A B factor, or maybe even A B factor or other A B factor, or just A B factor, right? Why not? But as I, as I know, uh, no one tried. <laughs> I, I don't know the reason. Uh, actually, uh, right, because that's, we only need to handle only one set S there, right? But if we handle the robust GM factor theory, then there are two sets S and T. Okay? And it's more complicated, actually. Although I also did not introduce robust GI factor theory, anyway. but uh, yeah, um, yeah. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, so hopefully, maybe in the next time, uh, I, I hope that I can I can give a, a talk about uh, <laughs> this one. So far, no one uh, got any research to relate to this question. Uh, actually, it, it is it is not that easy to handle robust GI factor theory. That's a little bit complicated, actually. But well, uh, so I think this is a this may be the good question. I mean, if you are interested in this topic. And maybe not that easy, but uh, if you are also interested in robust GF factor theory, then probably this is also a very good question. There are also many uh, questions, many open questions related to robust GF factor theory. I'm working on them also. And uh, well, by working on those research problems related to robust GF factor theory, I recognize that. Uh, robust GI factor theory is, is not complete. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, maybe it can, that, that factor, that formula maybe can be improved. Because, it, see, uh, very nice, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, you know, touch one factor there, if there is one factor, then for all S in here, uh, this is less than this one, right? But if there is no one factor, then how big can the graph G have a uh, the one factor, or maybe we can. So, for example, <coughs> they show that the uh, the third lies the eigenvalue condition to have a one factor. But if there is no one factor, okay. So, so for example, the cubic graph. Do we always have a one factor? No, right? I mean, this is, you, you know that. The 16 vertex. And this is actually the smallest three regular graph without a perfect matching. So there is no, there's a, a cubic graph without a perfect matching. 
So if there is no perfect matching, then what is the smallest matching number? Or which means what is the maximum size of one factor? I mean, it's not one factor. Actually, one, one factor subgraph, actually. There, right. Yeah, that's a matching. But we can, we can generalize that one, okay? Like a two factor or three factor. If there is no two factor, if there, no, if there is no three factor, then how can we handle? So if there is no one factor, then there is a <coughs> Bertha formula. Right? So this one gives the, what is the matching number? So this is 1 over 2 times n minus, uh, actually. I'm not from one that one. Yeah. So, actually, maybe. maybe. Right? So we can do, but the uh, Lavashia factor theory also gives uh, necessary sufficient conditions for a graph to have a GF factor. Well, maybe say a special case like AB factor, right? Then there actually exists the SNT there. Then there may be also a version of uh, maybe GF factor theory like this. But I've never seen this kind of measure. Have you ever seen this one? I'm quite interested in this one, actually. So, well, we can start maybe from just a factor. So one factor, or two factor, or three factor. Okay, then, but the, how can we improve maybe Lobastia factor there? So I, I don't think that's a complete one. So I, I'm looking for this kind of formula. So yeah, uh, Amashi is one is a nice so sense. Uh, yes, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking for that one. For just uh, maybe I can start with just a factor, or maybe a b factor, not just one b factor. One b factor is a special case because there's only one set there. But if you see maybe Lobastian factor there, there are two sets, and we have to handle two sets, S and T. Okay. Then it may be more complicated, and I still have no idea how to how to improve or how to generalize Lobastian factor theory like like this. That's that's my that's uh, my actual main goal to do that one. But well, it looks it looks quite tough. Well, I'm not sure. There may be also eigenvalue condition. I'm not sure. That's why I'm working on both. Yeah. Anyway, so well, I think this is a good question. Yeah, if you're interested in maybe Lobastia effect or those kinds of things, then please let me know. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, this is your work today.